Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying an action adventure film, entitled Sniper Reloaded. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with Sergeant Brandon Beckett attending a deposition due to multiple charges against him, including desertion of his pod and dereliction of his duty. Lieutenant Ellen Abramowitz wants to know where he was on August 4, 2010. Beckett lets her know that he was with his squad in Congo at that time to train the local army against well-armed rebels financed by terrorist groups. In return, they would join them in Afghanistan. He further explains why he went AWOL. While training the Congolese army, Captain Nelson is summoned by Colonel Jager. He takes Beckett with him as this might be related to his transfer. They are then told that the training will be suspended for now as they need to take 10 of their men into the DRC for a special mission. Both did not expect to hear that, as it is supposed to be off limits for them. The officer assures them that they have the go signal from the government. Their task is to extract Belgian plantation owner Jean Van Brunt and his workers. Beckett suggests using a helicopter to get the Belgian out of the location. That will be an easier and safer route. Jaeger explains that it's too dangerous as the rebels in the area are in possession of missiles designed to target aircraft at low altitudes. As the team is closing in on their location, Beckett notices that a European hunter is still in the area despite the danger. Captain Goba explains that hunters are a huge part of the economy. That's why they are still permitted. The name of the hunter is Chandler. They reach the place of Jean Van Brunt, who did not expect a visit from the soldiers. Let alone to be told that they are there to take him out. Brunt displays resistance to leave as he is not afraid of the rebels, and the place was built by his father. He prefers to stay and take the consequences of his decision. He is told that the order stands, and he does not have a choice. Brunt then agrees to go with them. On their way out, Beckett senses that a sniper is aiming at Brunt. He then warns him to get down. They manage to hide inside an empty container van, but Brunt gets exposed and killed by the sniper. Two soldiers are also killed. The container van seems to have been used to deliver weapons from the US to the Congolese militants. Captain Nelson and Sergeant Beckett decide to run for the trees by the road. That's their best chance of not getting hit. Beckett is hit in the shoulder and falls into a manhole before he loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he is attended to by Chandler, the European hunter he saw earlier. He begs Chandler to take him back to the plantation as his comrades are there. When they arrive at the plantation, Chandler tells Beckett that he's the only one who survived. The two go inside Brunt's house to find what they can. Brunt's daughter, Kelly, appears out of nowhere and aims a gun at them. Her father hit her when the soldiers arrived earlier. She believes that they are responsible for his father's death. Chandler calms her down and explains that her father was his friend. They then take her with them. On the way to Chandler's place, they come across rebels who are kidnapping children to force them to fight for them. Once they are spotted, the rebels start targeting them. They retaliate and kill the rebels to save themselves and the lives of the children. They then go their separate ways as Chandler wants to rescue the other children that have been taken while Beckett plans to turn Kelly over to the authorities. Beckett becomes weaker as they are nearing the base. His wound is still fresh, he's been bleeding the entire time from being shot in the left shoulder. He does his best to remain conscious until he can no longer take it and collapses to the ground. He's taken to a hospital to recuperate. When he wakes up, sniper instructor Richard Miller, who is his father's former protege, is there to check on him. Beckett expresses his desire for revenge. He wants to find that sniper and kill him. As a sniper instructor, Miller explains the need to become a sniper to understand how snipers operate and how their brains function. He offers to help him out. Back at the office of Colonel Jaeger, Beckett is surprised that he does not seem to want to have the ambush investigated despite being told that the soldiers were killed using US weapons. UN Lieutenant Ellen Abramowitz sides with Jaeger and tells Beckett that they don't have the resources to investigate further. Beckett volunteers to conduct the investigation himself. He can't just let it slide, knowing his teammates were killed in that incident, but the officer rejects his proposal. Beckett invites Abramowitz to dinner as he knows that she knows something more than she's telling him. She lets him know that she's not the enemy. The UN just does not have the resources to dig deep into why Brunt was killed. Beckett tells her that he knows how to track the sniper. She hints that it was more than a rebel attack. This gives him the idea that there's more to the incident. Beckett is now on a mission to avenge the deaths of his comrades. Miller spots him leaving the base and warns him that he is not in the right condition to do the job, but Beckett has made up his mind. This is the moment where Beckett chooses to leave his post and goes AWOL to reunite with Chandler and track down the rebels. Beckett assures Chandler that he will help rescue the kids if he helps him locate the rebels. 
Chandler and Beckett proceed to a small rebel camp where the children that Chandler is looking for are brought in. They are being prepared to be taken to another rebel camp to become soldiers. From a distance, they can see the rebels unloading weapons that seem to come from the US. Beckett asks Chandler to go down while he secures his position. Execution is about to get underway when Beckett scans from his scope. When one rebel is about to kill a child with a machete, Beckett does not hold back and kills the insurgent. The rest of the rebels are also killed by Beckett using his rifle. One rebel is moving towards Chandler's back. Beckett fails to see that rebel himself. All of a sudden, the rebel is killed with a sniper shot. As it turns out, Miller decides to help Beckett as he knows how dangerous the sniper is. His name is Musiello, an American Marine and a former student of Miller. Beckett is taken aback as he was under the impression that they were up against a Congolese rebel and not against a fellow American. Miller also tells Beckett that the order must have come from high up in the chain of command. Brunt must have been killed to prevent him from spilling the beans about supplying US weapons to the rebels and to the Congolese government. After sharing his theory, Beckett begins to question Miller if he is part of the cover-up. Miller assures him that he is there to help him. Beckett's father trained him to become a sniper, and this is his way of paying him back. He is concerned about his safety of Beckett after finding out that his teammates have been ambushed. Beckett informs Abramowitz over the phone that he knows who executed his men. He asks her to send a team to pick him up. He gives his location to her on purpose. If the conspiracy is true, the sniper will find out where he is, and he will know that even the UN is part of this. Abramowitz approaches Colonel Jaeger and informs him where Beckett is. She begs to send a team to rescue him. She also tells him that Beckett has overwhelming evidence to support who ambushed his teammates, but the officer is quite dismissive of this telling her that he can't afford to send a team and that getting approval for this mission is a huge challenge. Abramowitz volunteers to pick Beckett up herself. Jaeger gives the go signal and sends four men to go with her. What she does not know is that he also sends a hit squad that includes Musiello, the sniper. They will be there to execute the rogue American. Chandler takes the kids on a truck out of Congo and to safety. Miller and Beckett are now waiting if Musiello shows up. Miller hands over a handgun to Beckett. It's a souvenir from Beckett's late father, and Miller wants him to use the gun to eliminate Musiello. Abramowitz and her squad show up to save Beckett, but she has no idea that the soldiers accompanying her are there to murder Beckett. Another hit squad is also on their way to make sure that Beckett does not survive. She is dismissive at first until gunshots ensue. Beckett is now up against the Congolese soldier that he and his men trained. Beckett and Miller eliminate the rebels and the Congolese soldiers one at a time. Miller gets careless when he tries to stand up and is shot by Musiello. He is wounded. Beckett tracks down Captain Sporo Ngoba. He forces him to tell him who's behind the operation. Ngoba then confesses that Brunt was used by Jaeger to supply American weapons to the rebels. He adds that he chose not to report knowing that no one would believe him, including Beckett. Captain Ngoba is then shot and killed by Musiello. Ngoba could have testified against Jaeger, but now that he's killed, Beckett lacks the evidence to take down the officer. Beckett is able to trace the location of Musiello. He aims at him and gets ready to finish the job. When Beckett squeezes the trigger, he hits the scope of Musiello and scrapes the sniper's face, but the sniper survives. Both refuse to give up until nighttime comes, and they are forced to use night vision devices. Beckett intentionally runs near a gas tank. He wants Masiello to focus his sight nearby. Beckett then shoots the tank until it explodes to distract his vision of Masiello, giving him enough time to move to a different location without being detected. Masiello adjusts his scope and gets back to business. Without him knowing, Beckett sneaks behind his back, grabs the gun that Miller gave him, and kills him at point-blank range. Back at the deposition, Beckett is asked if he has enough evidence to support that Jaeger is behind the operation of supplying arms to the rebels. Beckett is unable to provide one. He is then told that the court-martial will proceed. Beckett consents that both officers investigating him know that Jaeger is the mastermind. Officially, they can't do anything, especially if there's no concrete evidence to take down the officer. Abramowitz then switches off the recording. Beckett is then told that as officers, they can't take further action as they have regulations to follow. That's enough for Beckett to know what needs to be done next. He lets himself into the house of Colonel Jaeger and confronts the officer. Brunt was Jaeger's friend, as shown in their photos together. Jaeger admits that the US government sold weapons to the rebels and the Congolese military. He used Brunt to funnel the weapons. Jaeger is under the impression that Beckett is going to kill him at any moment. He keeps revealing information that can be used against him. Without his knowledge, 
Abramowitz and her team have been secretly listening to him from the other room. Colonel Jaeger is subsequently arrested. The movie ends with Major Gull, Special Operations Commander, shows up as soon as Jaeger leaves. He is there to personally offer Beckett a job. He will be working alongside Miller, who is also there to see him personally. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.